In this presentation, I will talk about joint control and modeling in robot arms. I will first explain how internally works a robot control unit to understand how data flows from the program to the movement. Then, I will focus on the modeling of direct current rotary motors and how motor drives work. To finish the presentation, I will talk about PAD control of motors to control position, speed, current and voltage. The main elements of an industrial robot are, on the one hand, the programming unit that is governed by the operator, which is responsible for generating the programs or commands needed by the control unit. This unit is responsible for generating the control actions to control the motor of the industrial robot arm. This robot might include a tool that allows the robot to interact with the environment. The robot also includes sensors, mainly position, speed and torque sensors uh, for each of its joints and possibly the tool. The control unit reports the status of the robot to the programming unit back to the user. The control unit of an industrial robot is a complex unit and it's made of many subsystems. It is an industrial computer that interprets and executes the movement commands of a program. The program can be entered via a teach pendant or flex pendant or via a manufacturer-specific software and it is stored uh, on the control unit. The control unit has an industrial communication module to communicate normally with an external PLC as part of a flexible manufacturing cell. It also has a set of input outputs that allows the user to control external access, such as conveyor belts or the gripper, etc. The instructions of the program are translated into movement commands that pass through a trajectory generator. This trajectory generator defines joint movements, considering the kinematic model the geometry of the robot to avoid uh, collisions between links and singularities of the robot, etc. Joint trajectories pass also through a dynamic controller that takes care of aspects such as load compensation, gravity compensation and many other aspects such as color effect, etc. In the end, it generates torque references for the control drive. So, uh, a low-level controller is in charge of generating the required torque that will uh, actually generate the desired motion on the mechanical structure. Sensors provide feedback to the control unit. Robots have different types of motors, but without a doubt, the most common type are direct, direct current rotary motors, which we could classify as brushed and brushless motors. Brushed motors have two rods in the rotor that uh, are in permanent contact with two brushes. The magnetic field induces a torque that generates the rotation and switching of the current direction. It's required to keep that torque. In brushless motors, commutation must be done electronically. It is more efficient, more silent and more reliable and requires less maintenance, but the electronics uh, to, to drive the motor is uh, more complex. Both motors are supplied uh, with a direct uh, current voltage and the speed is regulated with a PWM signal. Depending on the type of application, we will choose between one motor or another type of motor. Being, in this case, brushless motors, the, the most common ones in industrial robots. No matter what type of robot we use, uh, it must behave uh, in many cases as a servo motor, that is, a motor that can be controlled uh, with a torque, a speed or a position, using uh, obviously sensors that provide feedback to the corresponding signal, with the corresponding signal. Motors uh, will need a motor drive in order to supply the current uh, to the motor, we will discuss this later. Without going into details, we will see the motor as uh, an element that has an electrical circuit and a mechanical part. 
after applying a direct voltage, which obviously we can modify um, uh, this value over time if we, if we uh, regulate this uh, with a PWM signal, this voltage passes through an electrical uh, circuit made up of a resistor and a coil due, for instance, uh, to the rotor windings of a direct current uh, brush motor. The back electrocutive force, VE, is the voltage that is generated in the motor because of the rotation of the motor through a specific magnetic field, and it depends directly on the speed of rotation. The force or torque provided by a motor is directly proportional to the current flowing through it. In the mechanical part, the net torque, that is the torque, the motor torque minus the load torque, will cause a speed of rotation that will depend obviously on the inertia of the motor and the uh, viscous friction. The mathematical expressions that I indicate here are uh, the ones that are commonly used uh, in order to model the dynamic behavior of a, a DC motor. In order to accomplish with the principle of uh, energy conservation, Km must be equal to Kb. This is, uh, or this will be the case when there are no uh, energy losses. As we can see, compared to the step, uh, or if we, if we can see the, the step response, uh, it basically behaves like a first order system for the uh, given parameters that I show here. As it can be seen from the frequency response, the speed of the motor will start uh, to decrease for high frequency voltages that will result uh, in a kind of vibration or will be observed as such as vibra uh, vibration. The zero that the load has causes that the frequency response decreases to minus 20 dBs instead of minus 40 dBs as it does in the case of the voltage. Uh, in fact, uh, it can be seen that from a certain frequency the electrical part begins to be relevant because there is a change in the slope of this magnitude in the body plot. It is therefore clear that the working range of the motor will normally be at low frequencies, which will limit the bandwidth of our controller, and therefore uh, also the bandwidth of the application. For this motor, the controller should not generate control actions within a frequency greater than about 30 readings per second, since from these frequencies and above, the motor begins to behave like a low-pass filter and the effect of the input will not be appreciated on the output, in this case it's the motor speed. For all these reasons, sometimes we ignore the electrical part, thus simplifying the dynamic model of the motor to a first-order system, assuming that the inductance is very small. Vicious fr friction is also often uh, ignored as it is also very small. In fact, in the figure below, we can see how the frequency responses of the motor, the full model of the motor and its simplified version are practically identical up to a certain frequency. The motor drive is a very important element for controlling a motor. It is in charge of supplying the energy in the form of voltage and indirectly current that the motor needs. But isolating the low power signals at which uh, the controller usually works from high power signals at which the motor usually requires is actually the task of the, the motor drive. Therefore, one of its main tasks consists of properly amplifying and conditioning the signals to the motor, also protecting the motor from high voltage spikes that could damage it and electrically isolating the controller from the motor drive. In the case of direct current motors, the motor drive is usually made of a set of transistors or MOSFETs that control the flow of current in a structure known as H-bridge. In brushless motors, the configuration is also an H-bridge, but in this case we need three of them. Diodes uh, are used to protect transi uh, transistors from high voltage spikes uh, when they switch. To control a, a motor we generate a PWM signal, that is a signal that switches at very high frequencies to regulate 
the amount of time that we provide voltage to the motor. As the motor behaves like a filter at these frequencies, uh, that will be appreciated as uh, an average uh, voltage uh, applied to the robot. Depending on the transistors that we activate, the current flow will flow in one direction or the opposite direction. Uh, as you can see uh, in, the, in the paths marked with the blue and red uh, paths in the, in the left figure. Many motor drives allow you to set the, a PWM signal limiter also to, uh, let's say, limit the maximum voltage that we can apply to the motor in, in, in average. This is uh, done because uh, sometimes the maximum voltage that the motor uh, supports it's not compatible with the voltages that we provide with our power supply. Here I show two motor drives. One is a low-cost solution for controlling brushed DC motors and the other one, the one on the right, is a more expensive solution to control brush and brushless uh, motors and prices of uh, motor drives may vary from few euros to hundreds of them. A PID controller is a well-known controller in the industry that allows regulating a process using three constants or gains that act, each of them, on the error variable to be controlled. Thus, the proportional action P generates a control action that is proportional to set error signal. Action D, the derivative, generates a control action proportional to the derivative of the error which combined with the proportional action generates a PD controller. The I action acts on the integral of the error, which combined with the proportional action would generate a PI controller, and if we combine all of them, then we have the PID controller. In the table, I show the error variables that we would use for position, speed, and current control of direct uh, current uh, motors. I have put uh, the integral uh, actions in grey to indicate that this should be done as long as our application seeks for cancelling low frequency disturbances. Um, this is a, an element that must be taken uh, with care because might uh, unstabilize the, the controller. Note that uh, a PI controller uh, in velocity is equivalent to a PD controller in position. For a current control, a proportional control is usually used to regulate the voltage level that the motor should have to induce a certain amount of current. This controller, without going into more details, requires a closed loop controller to work at a high bandwidth, since the controller uh, uh, will see the mechanical part as a, a some kind of low frequency disturbance and the dominant uh, dynamic will be the electrical part for the, the, the current controller. Um, not all motor drives can control motors in voltage and current mode. The simplest ones only control motors in voltage mode. Indeed, in this mode, uh, a PD controller, uh, in case we want to control the position of a motor, must generate a PWM signal that will be applied to the H-bridge. Uh, in the case of controlling the position in current mode, the controller must generate a reference current and internally the motor drive will generate the necessary uh, PWM signal to achieve this current through proportional control. The advantage of controlling uh, the position of a motor based on current is that we can limit the maximum current which will prevent the motor from being damaged in the event that it, it gets blocked and obviously it's safe for humans as well. In a similar way we could implement the speed controller. In this case I suggest to use a PI control uh, uh, with, together with a motor drive in voltage mode. In this case the controller will generate the PWM signal that makes the motor rotate at the desired speed. The interval action that makes uh, possible to guarantee that the motor will reach uh, the desired speed in steady state, uh, usually it's, it, it, it includes some kind of uh, anti-wind-up uh, system to avoid integrate 
errors over the transition. So only the uh, it, it gets activated when the error band get, enters into some kind of search band. In this presentation we have mentioned the elements of a control unit of an inertial robot and we have explained the fundamentals of the elements that in, um, appear in uh, control applications. Specifically we have seen how direct current uh, rotation motors uh, power drives and how to control uh, these motors uh, in position, speed and current. Thank you very much.